Hello everybody, I think we are live. Today is 29th of April 2015. Oh my god, it's already 2015. All right. Um, I started channeling recently. That's introduction for new people. We get about 100 views, so new people are coming. Channeling. Some people don't know what channeling is, and neither do I, but we got used to that. We have lots of channelers, and our favorite is Bashar. Go check out Bashar and and come back then. Yeah, most of us know what channeling is, at least get used to that. It is when you invite an extraterrestrial, they come into your body and they speak. In my case, it's a bit different. I stay here, I want to take part in it. So we discuss with an extraterrestrial what to speak about and we talk together. I put my ideas, they put their ideas, it's all kind of a mishmash. But their present, their personality comes through and it is very clear. Yesterday I got nice confirmation. It's nice to get some confirmation that it's for real. Uh, and these nice confirmations were pretty painful. I tried to mix together and bring together and alternate three different personalities. One reptilian, one Yael, and one Liron. And they spoke just fine, mixing a little bit, but then when they when I came out, I they were fighting within me. The energies didn't go well together, so I had pretty painful exit. Mm. That was absolutely real, absolutely real. And between the sessions, I, I'm dizzy some days. Today I'm not too much, but other days I'm pretty dizzy, pretty spaced out. Things are not real for me. So it is another confirmation. And the best ones, I don't know who is doing that, but apparently some forces are playing with my electronics. I'm really good with electronics. And when it breaks for no reason or crashes for no reason, I know that's them, especially when I realize the reasons why they do that. I wish they did something more positive, like send me money, send me presents, give me good stuff. But no, they like to break stuff, whoever is doing that. So, But um, whenever something breaks, I then realize, oh, it's time for me to stop. Usually, my instinct is to fix it, right? If something broke, you got to fix it. Now I think, okay, first time I fix it, but then they break it second time, all right, I will stop for now, and it fixes by itself. Oh, thanks, everybody. There are a few people who send donations, and there is uh, some order in future sessions, and some order in future computer scheduling, computer uh, tune-up works. I, and that is great help. I need your financial support. It would be nice to focus on what is exciting, which is channeling, and not to worry about the money, not to do other stuff, which is mm, not as efficient. I, I, I wish it was efficient, but it is not. So channeling is, is, is very exciting. I wanted that for a long time, for years, and now I play with that idea. And another confirmation I got, at some point they just stop, and when they don't speak, I cannot speak. That is another confirmation that something is happening. And I feel a lot of inspiration. I feel really good when I channel and a few minutes after that. And then I go down. But but I feel that inspiration coming. So that is great. Send your support. Um, and also I wanted to bring another idea. Maybe somehow I'm not that good in attracting the money. So. And we look at Bashar and Daryl channel by Daryl Ankam. And he has his helper, who is very talented in organizing things and bringing the money, selling tickets and stuff like that. So if any of you have the, has that talent and want to help, let's form some sort of some sort of structure, it, whatever it is, and mm, let's expand in our in a smart way. We have now more than one channel, so it doesn't have to be only me speaking. We have obviously Jim, we have Kim started channeling, a few others are channeling. So so we can have those uh, events, not only online, but 
I'm thinking that it would be nice to have another side, not one face per window, but multiple faces per window. So we can bring local groups together and channel to them and and spread the word, spread the message. Okay, I when I channel, I close my eyes, but I'm still here. So if I need to look, I, I will open and and look. So uh, and if I keep them open, sort of, I take control and their inspiration, the energy sort of fades out. So I open the eyes, close, and it comes back right away. Sometimes. Yeah, usually they does. So that's how it goes. So I'm not fully away, not like Pashar and Jim. They can go away, wander, do their stuff somewhere in their uh, their bubble, alternate reality. And I, I'm staying here and uh, playing together. Mm. That brings more grounded message. It's more like uh, my personality is more present, my experience is more present, but surely there is their personality, their experience too. And sometimes they ask, yeah, when they ask, you know, sometimes I don't know what to say and I wait for them to say something. And as soon as they send a line, especially when it's channeling the poet, I I start having that line. I have no idea what will come next. So, so that's another thing. But these slides that come, they don't have their signature. I don't really know where from they come. So, so it doesn't. It's still. It is still for me, like my imagination working. And how do I know it's not? Only afterwards I look at that and say, mm, "It's not my style. It's not me." Sometimes, and sometimes it is me. Yes. <sighs> Anything before? Oh, let's say hi, everybody. Hey, Brian. Hey, Mark. Hey, Noha. Sarah, nice to have you. Or you say Sarah, oh, nice to have you. And Good hey, morning. Winfrey Curley. You, hey. Is anybody from Europe here? I pick that time to have people from Europe, but apparently we have someone. We have Noha from Middle East, right? Yeah. What would it be called Arabia. Middle East? Arabia. Arabia, Arabia. Uh, I need to learn more about Arabia. What are your neighbors? Well, we have Dubai, you have uh, Kuwait, you have uh, uh, Bahrain. Well, it looks on the globe uh, like a heart. It looks like a heart shape between Egypt and uh -huh. uh, Persia. We're in the middle. It looks like a heart shaped one. You know? I see. I see, I see. Now I get better. I, I need to look at the maps. Mm. Yeah. Welcome and thanks for coming. It's nice to have you as a frequent. Nice to have your smiley face. Smiley avatar. Smiley avatar. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. All right. I go now. The introduction was intentional. I really wanted to say that. Mm. Yes, hi. You can call me Rojo, or you can call Rojo. I am actually we are Max and Rojo together here. I am a Yael. Yeah, Yael. Starting to work on the Earth project. I am located on a ship circling the Earth and helping here and there. My main interest is your society channeling, looking around, helping in a way we can, learning more about your understanding of beauty and obviously the idea of ascension personal 
and collect. Today, is there anything else I need to talk? Yeah, I guess it's not important, but I have male and female energies. And I look more like a tall gray than a human. But there are Yael who look exactly like humans. And there are Yael who are born into human life, not remembering that they are, they are Yael. And there are Yael who come down who grew up in our culture and come down and walk on the streets and learn human life physically. They usually come for a short period of time because since they didn't grow on Earth, they cannot stay long. They are fourth density beings grounding and materializing in third density, so they had to use technology to come down and experience Earth. So people cannot really tell, not often they can tell that they deal with aliens because some of the AL look like humans and some don't look like humans, but we have the ways to transform ourselves to look like humans. Today I wanted to speak about different levels of light worker perception. Some of you are, have grown up in mainstream culture and then became awakened to the idea of us and spiritual world. Are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Some of you are born as so-called crystal children, indigo children, and some of you are so high-spirited, you are not really in your 3D reality. You, are, you need the help to connect to... Mm, other people, the majority of people around you because they are so out of this world. And it is often called grounding, or at least one form of grounding when you are so you're so in other so much in other dimensions, so much in a dream state, so much in your bubble world, bubble reality, then the majority of people don't have place in it and when you look at them you don't link well to them they are so different so foreign to you you feel foreign Rojo yes Rojo, I have a question for you this is Curly hi hi Curly <laughs> nice to speak to you thank you me too so do I. I wanted to know um, how high am I am. And uh, the second question is, um, am I going to have a role in the future of Ascension? Um, because I feel very strongly that I really, really want to channel. And this is my highest excitement for now. Oh, but I need help. <laughs> yes. Tell me so. Many questions. <sighs> yes. All right, I have to explain my situation. I come here and as me and Max playing beyond the veil, we are down here. And the veil separates the other part of me from me here. Not like with other channelers. I don't have access right now to your direct access to you, except from what I hear and from what Max remembers. But we have the connection through Max's higher self, from inspiration. So some connection we do have, but not direct. Okay, so what, what do you have? Yes, but I can give you some perspective. Somebody said, uh, something, somebody else said, was it Noha? I was saying um, you cannot tap to, onto our Akashic records. Not directly, not straight, not straight. These miracles are restricted, but we can give you perspective. We can serve you in a different way. How do you, how do you uh, tap on us? Upon our higher selves, or how? 
Uh, there are ma many ways. Through higher selves would be one. By direct looking at them would be another. If you're in proper state of mind, if you open and believe and you are in synchrony with their source, it's all obvious. It was all straight. The matrix of 3D reality, especially the matrix of human surface reality is such that there is a, wa a veil, artificial veil, which separates 3D reality from the Akashic Records. It is there by design. The human collective has chosen this experience to be fully separated. And the key of this experience is that when you're fully separated, fully isolated, fully alone, you don't have any proof. That's the key of this experience. That's the key of the design of this matrix. You don't have a complete proof. You can only choose by leap of faith without knowing, without the proof. If it is proof, it's easy, right? You know what's good, what's bad, you choose good. Uh, but if you don't have proof, you have to choose through the leap of faith. It's a choice by faith. You choose to believe, you choose to be good without knowing the answer. And that's the key of human experience. So the Akashic record is not fully accessible to you if you're in 3D reality. Uh, the key to access it is to have a really good reason. Say, one of the really good reasons is survival of human race. And to help the survival of human race, you would need to personally ascend or collect and collectively ascend. And this collective ascension happens through net light worker networking. You have to connect to light workers, create a grid, populate this grid with new ascension energies and shift the earth from one reality to the next one. Okay, it well, might happen at so once or it might happen in generations. There are multiple timelines. Please go now with your question. Sorry, uh, so what do you feel for me in the next future? Do you see something? Because this is my highest excitement to help uh, Ascension on Earth. And I would love to be a kind of teacher between children and uh, hybrids to bring, you know, our experience and they will bring our ex their experience and we will, we will chat and we will uh, try to interact together. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. You are an artist. Max knows that, so I know that too. Yeah. Do you have access to to community of children in locally, locally, in local areas? Mm. Are you working with children? Yes. <laughs> I'm not Tell working, but I am interacting with children, yeah. Tell me more. Uh, no, just about my kids and, you know, all, they, all that. <clears throat> yes. <sighs> See, uh, if that is your highest excitement, as you said, yeah. there are, and you live in a city, right? Yes. Yes, there are. Many families who have got indigo children, hybrid children, with very high spirits, very high genetics, infused with great genes. And because these children are so higher dimensional, they have real trouble grounding to to their mainstream way of life. And they're labeled, how, do, how are they labeled? Autistic. Autistic. They're labeled by mainstream to be autists. 
Yeah. I pronounce it. ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Attention mm -hmm. Deficit Disorder, ADD, Autist. Uh, these are three main labels. And they are treated with drugs which actually lower the vibration. The drugs lower the vibration and bring these children down to ground. So it serves the ground in person, but breaks their connection to their higher energy so they become less healthy in many ways. So it's uh, it's the way society does that. And then these children are pushed to be part of the society and, and they become unhappy. Mm -hmm. So that's the predicament. You understand that really well, do you? Yeah. Yes, sure. Thank you. Yes. So if you say that your highest excitement is to channel and we want to work with children. You have to find your path to achieve that. And obviously your art and your access to, to these children, your children and other children could help you to find that path. Okay. I don't think the parents of these children would be happy if you started channeling this <laughs> as Bashar, our friend Bashar does. I don't, it doesn't seem like it's, uh, there is any possibility of that. So you would have to deal with 3D parents having uh, largely 4D children. <laughs> Good. Yes, how? But I think I sense you have this 3D part really strong in you. You are actually very practical. You're very strong in material life as well. I sense that. So you are a perfect hybrid of 4D and 3D in one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Here you. are the cards for you, and build your castle of the cards in in any wish you in any way you wish and then strengthen it with glue so it's not breakable anymore. Strengthen mm -hmm. it with the idea of service which is the glue. If you are useful, if you are in the flow, then it becomes really strong. The pain you, you feel, the pain of others, the pain you take on yourself, make it a glow as well. If the pain is properly <sighs> vortexed, properly turned, yes, the word is turned, wrapped, yeah, proper word would be wrapped. The pain it comes to, if you wrap it properly, if you turn it around and make a vortex out of it, mm -hmm. it becomes a gyroscope which allows you to ground yourself to this actually fluid reality. The pain becomes a stepping stone for you. So these pains build a castle on these transformed pains which become a Stepping stones, yes, and step on them and go up. Okay, I'll uh, try that. Have Thank you, you tried? Yes, have you tried? You're welcome. Have you tried meetup.com? Meetup.com. Oh, yeah, I know that. I'll try. Yeah, yeah. look at okay. the calendar of today. Just the whole calendar of all meetups happening in this huge city of yours today. You okay. will see about 300 meetups guaranteed of today, okay. especially on weekends. And then if you've got free time, see, oh, that is where we can go with my kids and join other kids and do crafts and arts and that sort of stuff. You possibly need to unite with are the light workers. Okay. Possibility. Find the people who are in the same state of mind. Healing okay. the children, helping them to connect and get of their nasty drugs which <clears throat> block their 
<coughs> connections to higher energies. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <coughs> Yes. <coughs> ah. I invite Sharon. My voice is uh, low now. Does anyone does anyone want to speak? I'd recommend that uh, Max grab a glass of water. <coughs> ah, that's a fresh idea. <laughs> Rojo. Yes. If you come down to Earth, can you walk among us naturally, or you have to morph yourself? Ah. Uh, yes, I. Yeah, I usually use technology to morph myself. Then do it and come down. We don't have to wait for first contact. <laughs> I. Um, I am not permitted. It would oh, no. be. Impolite and a violation listen, listen. to Let's talk reveal about my free will. identity. Let's talk about free will because you keep on saying free will all the time. Okay, if we ask you permission, then we're giving you the free will, aren't we? <coughs> Get my question. Um, there is a strong, strong rejection, strong, what's it word? Mm, disagreement from a human collective as a spiritual collective entity, a human collective as a surface physical, um, what's that word, consensus of billions of humans, and your official representatives from United Nations and many major countries um, explicitly prohibit us from the first contact, direct interactions, and actually interference, any sort of interference on the ground. We are, though, <clears throat> what's that word? With all that, we still are permitted to channel, and, and that's what we do. We are permitted to appear to you in spiritual matters. They cannot prohibit us that. So we can come to you in meditations, in dreams, when you are in elevated state. You're not fully physical, so you can communicate to us. And we can take you spiritually for astral visits to our worlds. That's what we are doing now. As your community, as your network grows, as it becomes stronger, as the word spreads out, Mm. As your movies, because the movies and songs are shaping the minds, as your movies are more developed, more become more accepting of the idea of our visitation, as the collective mind shifts to the, the idea of being more open to the contact, physical contact on the ground, Things will change, yes. We are doing whatever is permitted. We are playing by the rules. And we are hopeful. You have to wait. You have no other choice. Oh, no, no waiting. You have to act, of course. And, yes, um, networking is the word of today. Build your local network, your global network, remote network, connect to people, strengthen this network, strengthen the ties, know the names, know what people are about, find your soul flames, your people of your kindred, of your kind, and bond with them locally and remotely. And that brings me to one of the thoughts of today one of the messages of today, which is in the air, floating here, is buzzing. The idea that a light worker, a person spiritually high, doesn't have to be 
knowledgeable about us. Doesn't have to be awakened to extraterrestrial idea. A lot of true light workers have no clue who Bashar is and who the aliens are. They are ignorant about us. It doesn't prevent them from being true light worker and helping personal and collective ascension. How do you find them and what is that? Mm, I need a definition. Ignorant light worker sounds derogatory. They're mm. light workers by nature. That, that's how they are. The new uh, generations. The crystal, the the new ones, the indigos, and all, all those, they are by nature light workers. Ah, yes. But before you continue, I'm, I must tell you on the, on, your, on the screen there is a fog. There's fog. That means there's spirits about you. Can you see them? It, it's foggy. To me, the screen is foggy about you. That means there's ah. spirits, right? Yes, this is a presentation of the spirits, but it's technological. Max, press the button. Go to the top right of the screen. There is uh, a fuzzy word saying original. When you move the mouse there, it would say original there. Click on that and then click on the word focus. And you will have your spirits around you, surrounding you, <laughs> kissing you and tickling your arms. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I, I don't have to do that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So, I guess I would invite you to share your experience with true light workers who have no clue about aliens. Who are these people? You probably have these enlightened people around who are truly serving truly happy, truly supporting others, and not worrying about aliens at all, and not being afraid. Do you know such people? Anybody, please share. Well, we may know such people, but when we begin to go into our fourth dimensional thoughts <laughs> it's a little it kind of puts them off because they're they can't connect to the ideas ah so there are people who you would resonate except you have to have your mouth shut about the end exactly right? and or... i'm not going to shut my mouth yeah, or you call them star people. Maybe that's the best word that <laughs> I know for the moment, star people. Yeah, tell me more about these people. Have you met them? Um, enlightened people not knowledgeable about aliens or not paying attention about to, to us, to star people. Well, here's one. So... I have a friend, he takes me to my martial arts class, mm -hmm. and um, I introduce him to certain topics, I can see that he's a very spiritual being, he's accepting of spirituality and whatnot, but I also see ships in the sky, and I point them out, and he sees them, and he thinks it's a helicopter, and I'm like, no, that's a ship, it just turned way upside down. <laughs> And he's like, well, it, 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 he gets funny about it because ah. it's not, he's just not totally prepared just yet. <laughs> ah. How does, uh, tell me more about how is he enlightened? Is he serving others? Is he yes. positively inspired? Yes. Tell me yes. more. He's what is he doing? What's his mission? How does he help Ascension? Well, I don't know what his mission is. I just know he's a teacher. A teacher? He's, yes. He is a very light-spirited being. Ah. Yes. Is he well-grounded? I would say so. 
Is he successful in what he is doing? He teaches at a college. Yes. So here is a role model, right? He blocks the aliens, but otherwise, all around, he is a light worker, right? Yes. And suppose what happens if he becomes knowledgeable about the conspiracies, the aliens, the dangers. Well, I'm come. sure he's heard about the conspiracies before. Yes. I'm sure, because who hasn't? <laughs> so he might lose his job. He might go off track and not actually be successful for a while. Mm. No judgment yeah. here, just play with the ideas. Well, yeah, especially I don't know, because not everyone's path is not ours. We yes. decided to choose this path for ourselves. Yes, it's yes. awakened us up much more, but everyone's path is not going to be the same. I wonder, maybe in his world, he creates a reality where everything is there except the star people. Maybe in his reality, star people don't even exist. In his reality, uh, beings like the crocodile god, like Sabak and things like that, that is this. Yes. In his reality, God exists. In his reality, uh, angels exist. Yes. So it's not that far-fetched. And no for place him. for Yael. <laughs> <sighs> um, well, I, I, I explained wonder, it yes. to him before. I explained to, to him before. You see, there's lots of planets out there and lots of stars out there. There are aliens, so he agrees that there are aliens. Yes. But if you were to point out that there's an alien over there, <laughs> yes. that's a problem. If I come there as, as a holographic projection and wave hand in front of me and say, hey, hi, I'm here. I'm an alien. <laughs> he would look through me and not notice me. Or he says, no, that's just a human. A gray yeah, colored exactly. human with no problem. That's just a helicopter, no problem. Yeah, the helicopter just turned yeah. upside down. Yeah, that's just a helicopter. <laughs> Interesting. And no judgment here. Because he's doing a great job. He's helping Ascension. So, uh, he has a blockage, like a big... How, how do you visualize a blockage? Uh, <laughs> on his glasses, he has, like, marker black colored alien, which you can <laughs> see, right? No, no alien there. No, I don't see you. Right. So, how do you communicate with this person? Do you have a I way to leave him otherwise without mentioning the aliens? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. How do you do that? What's your vibrational connection? Well, one, we both enjoy the martial arts class. Two, oh, uh, that's where you he loves my work. happy energy. Yeah. He yeah. loves the energy. He loves that I can talk about extra dimensional properties, even though before he met me, he never heard anyone say fourth dimensional anything. Ah. <laughs> um, he loves the fact I even did Naga for him because I felt like he was ready. Ah. And he wasn't afraid. Nice. nice. So, I, I guess everyone's different. Everyone is just different. The way they perceive things, the way they accept things, they're just different. Ah, so how could you include him in a grid of light workers if he is not willing to go and notice us? I'm Can not you? sure. I'm working that out. Ah, that's an open question. I <laughs> don't even want to elaborate on any answers. I'm just posing the question for everybody. Please share, continue, Sasera or anybody. I invite you to speak on the topic of enlightened people who are, have black alien marked on their glasses <laughs> so they can see us. Brian, you have anything to add? 
how do you communicate to non-believers? That's the question. How do you yeah, connect that's a, to the non-believers? That's a challenging issue, um, ongoing. Um, I think the best way is start small with like maybe ghost. Like if you heard that knock over there, if you ever, you know, if you ever hear things like a door opening up, just start small, kind of planting the seeds, just to get them curious on the unknown. Because usually most people could accept ghost or something supernatural, but not so much the alien right away. That aspect. Start small, just to see where they're at vibrationally. Throw a question or two out there, but don't intimidate them to a point where they're going to sh shut you down or, you know, push you away. Just throw out the question, open, open-ended question. What I see here, any person who is non-believer, you really want to convert them, isn't it? At least you try. That's what your message. If you met a non-believer. The only way to communicate to them is to convert them, or the main way is to convert them, to open them, to enlighten them, to um, awaken them, right? Yeah, well, we can say that about religions too, you know, people who want to convert other people into a religion. And I, I see it now as just being tolerable, a respectful of everyone's religions, and that they all carry a piece of the puzzle and it's just it's really about acceptance it's really about but if you want to at least let them know it doesn't necessarily mean that you're trying to totally um, force them to do something because you can't really it's really just helping them see a perspective that they're not used to just edging them a little along or throwing something out there that you can relate especially when it comes to angels those in the churches, you know, you could start with angelic energy. What is angels? I mean, they talk about in the Bible. So, you know, what it, ask people, what do they feel of it? What it, what's the What do they feel from it? Does it make if it's very uplifting? Start with something that everyone can resonate with and that they can at least agree with. Start on a commonality. Start on something that they can grasp. Um, because yeah. if you start telling them, sharing with something that so far fetched that they're not used to, it usually you're going to get resentment. You're going to get a push against you. You're gonna you, they'll walk away. You know something. They'll think you're crazy, strange, weird. But it does It's it's the person's. It's how they feel comfortable. You know if they feel comfortable talking about it. If they don't, then just like I said, just start small with something. It's not going to harm them. I have one. Brian. Yes. Um, yes. Continue. Please continue. There are two people trying to speak. Oh, go ahead, Noha. Actually, on my side, here in Arabia, they don't believe on ETs at all. It's a woo-woo subject, and they say, this is you must be out of your mind. And till the, I, uh, I spoke to my mom about it, and I told her about the corp shell girls, and she goes, you're going mad about this stuff. And then all of a sudden, she saw it on TV, and she was blown away. She goes, if I'm going to see an ET in front of me, I'm going to die on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing, because they're coming in that. They're kind of direct them toward um, when you feel, just throw it out there and say, well, it's on, on the media. It's more on like, the history channels. It's on the discovery channels. More people are showing these shows, these programs of what is going on so it just it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to believe you but at least the media to show them that hey I'm not the only one that's talking about this I'm I'm getting this from my newspapers or TV or magazines the media they're starting to expose it they're starting to share right so that's a wonderful thing so it's just maybe guide them in into a direction of programs of what you feel comfortable that might say, ah, maybe there's something, just to get the wheels turning. So like it's, that, ah, it, we're much bigger than this. It's, than quite what funny. it's quite funny how someone would, would believe the media before they believe their own eyes. Yes, it is strange. Any more sharings? But I would suggest, um, you know what it is, even if 
they aren't ready to totally include aliens into their lives. Um, this is how I go about being like. I'm going to be free to speak what I wish. I'm going to tell you the stories that I, I've experienced because I wish to do so and I have fun doing so. So the more I open up and tell them about my world, even though it's t entirely different from the world around them, <laughs> and the more they, they're going to start coming around. They're going to be able to accept it. It's just someone has to be there to introduce them to the topic. And if you're afraid to introduce people to the topic, they're never going to hear it. So <laughs> that, that's true because you might be that one person that came around, that gave them the information at the right time, at the right moment, that they just needed to hear it. Exactly. You hear about that all the time. And so you were the spark. You were sent there unknown with your contracts and how you choose but remember you're you're always in command your choice but how you present that is your creativity exactly. and how you want to use the verbiage the words that that can reach their heart and connect it with their mind in such a way that they're like ah I got it mm -hmm. I, I see something there's something but you're right Sarah it, it, it's cool because they see the joy they see that you're not pushing it on them. They're, you're just telling your experience. You're sharing exactly. your experience with them. That's it. Yep, that's, that's it. What, that's what causes the wheels to turn inside, and they start to say, ah, there's something there. I remember there's something there. Or, exactly. or they want to know, know something more and, and might lead to another question and another question. And then you just open the door, helped facilitate, open the door for them. Exactly. It's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. I invite more sharing anybody. The All question right. is, yes. The newcomers are not are opening their mouths. I don't know why. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> the newcomers are not <laughs> opening their mouths. I'm saying they're not joining. They're not participating. You hear did me? Anybody, did anybody understand? Please help me understand in the language. Oh God! Uh, she's inviting the new people. We have a couple of new individuals here who are now members of the Hukulo community because uh. they vibrated over here into our surroundings, and uh. she would like them to speak. Oh, thank you for explaining. The sound was muffled. Ah. Hmm. I don't see any new people around. Yes, we have our, Golda our, and Dimitri. Yes, and Dimitri never spoke. I think there is something wrong with his. Um, and Liney uh, is here today. Armis. Hi, Liney, Hi, honey. Hey, everyone. Hi, <laughs> Armistice. We are talking on the topic about. Hi, Sabrina. We are talking on the topic about the people who Hello. have the blockage on. Aliens, they are enlightened, they are doing positive <coughs> stuff. How can you bring them to network if they are blocked about aliens? And I would like to hear your perspective. Um, I think, I think right now, um, the important thing, it's the ascension um, and bringing everybody towards towards that in some kind of way. Um, I think that as we move on, people, because as enlightenment happens, your mind opens more to new ideas, to new directions. So, um, Making expanding the enlightenment, I think, would help people um, embrace the idea of extraterrestrials more. Because once they have raised their vibration, they can feel where they are coming from without having that fear. They're not starting from where their vibration is right now to try and match it to these extraterrestrials. 
as opposed to their vibration being higher and they can feel the love or the discomfort whatever but they know and they will be more comfortable when um, this is put in front of them I think it's a big jump um, which we did and obviously others can do it but it is a much easier road when you um, are coming along the ascension, the enlightenment knowing who you truly are, accepting you for who you are working all of your uh, 3D things and then once you say ETs they'll say oh really tell me about it as opposed to putting everything on the table and them not knowing what to what to what it's what and what is up what is down so so I think achieving that first step and then bringing up the other one is a much easier ride that's it thank you much much appreciation hi Roxy The question we are discussing is what to do with light workers who have a blockage about extraterrestrials. How can you link? How can you be of service? How can you communicate with their truly enlightened people except they're not awakened to the idea of extraterrestrial star beings? What to do with them? Is there any use for them? Is there any hope of them? And the main question do you really need to convert them? Is there a necessity? Is there a need to convert them? Do you have to convert them? Or is there a way to link to them without even mentioning the extraterrestrial star beings? Oh, Roxy missed the questions. Anybody else? Or what? Should I repeat? Please communicate, anybody. Are you here? Gota, Laini, uh, Dimitri, Armistice, would you like to speak? I think you just need to be. You will pick your curiosity and necessary something will come out. Thank you for your message. I get it, yes. Our I'll jump in real quick. Yes. Uh, an example. Uh, my mother um, was very, uh, she never was, she always believed that there was life on other planets. Which, in, especially when we were growing up as kids, my brothers and my sister. But she never really um, talked about it. She never really, we'd never known that she was even interested in it. At least I was. I never uh, talked about it with her growing up. I never shared my dreams with her. But I always felt that she knew something more, but she was keeping it inside. And I, I told myself, I want to be able to share something, my experiences with her, um, even though I was in fear of what she thought. Uh, what she was going to think when I start to speak about my experiences. I was I was terrified. I was afraid that I was going to be disowned. I was afraid that she wouldn't love me anymore. So, and this was my family. And so when I decided to share that with her uh, a couple years, about two, three years ago, um, it she took it in whether she believed everything I, I said, that, that's not the point. It didn't really matter to me in the beginning. I just wanted to share. I, I told myself I didn't want to keep it inside. Um, when I did that, something started to change within her. When she saw the excitement that I was getting from talking to groups like this online, and I told her about this, and I told her my excitement, she started to open up and say, whatever makes you happy and she started telling me some of her experiences when she was younger 
the things that she saw in the sky that she couldn't explain. And so there was a dialogue, I, like a, a breakthrough in a way, uh, that she, things that she always knew. But when I decided to share with her and, and go beyond, even in spite of fear, even in spite of fear, there was a breakthrough. There was something that she remembered, but it brought up within her. And that was beautiful because now I can share things with her and there's no more fear. So I brought up the help. I helped facilitate in a way a remembrance. And it was beautiful. And I'm so happy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to share that. I think that's I think that's what we're supposed to do, you know, like live your light. Don't hide. You know, if you do this stuff, it's like sometimes I get scared when I'm doing a private session. I'm like, ah, somebody's walking in. I get terrified. <laughs> oh, crap. What if... And my mom's quite a staunch Christian. It's a new Christian, so it's not that bad. But I'm just terrified she walks in. <laughs> You'll be like, who are you talking to? So I'll be like, uh, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like how far we've come, you know what I mean? From 2012, yeah. for example. I mean, once we get over the fear, and the thing is, it's just common sense. There's billions, trillions of stars out there. It's just, it's almost like you're looking at the sky, and you're, it's like you're denying something within yourself. You're denying God. You look up in the sky, at the stars, and you're like, why not? Why do we have to feel like we have to be in a box all the time and only have limited thinking? There's, there's more to that. Yeah, I think That's what I don't understand. It's like common sense. Look up there, guys. There's got to be, to say that we're the only life forms, that's just, even scientifically, that's nonsense. Yeah. I think people are past that. People know this of their life. But I was doing a private session with Tepe the other day, and I was talking about my um, brother-in-law. So I tried to introduce my sister and brother-in-law to this, and they just didn't want to believe it. So I asked Tepe about this, and he was like, yes, they know. They know about this stuff. They know aliens exist, but by admitting right. it, they will change their reality. And they like the way they they like the way things are actually. So they right. just don't want to admit it. And I I really believe and I really truly feel that it's not even the ones they feel inside and they know that there's life. What's hard for them to <coughs> accept in a way is it's hard for them because it's what their family and friends around them are going to think of them. That's the fear that comes in. What are others going to think of me once I start to talk and share what I know? I was talking to my guides the other day, and so I asked him about this. I said, Why don't humans admit it? So he actually did answer. He said something like, look, humans are too fat and happy with what they have. They don't give a SHIT about aliens and shit. They're, <laughs> they're just happy with what they have. So yeah, actually, and that's true. Because so, they do. Yeah, it's like, okay, that's what my mom said to me. She said, well, Brian, she said, so what? So what if there, there's aliens? So, you know, and then the mindset at the beginning was, well, why don't you start worrying about your family? Don't worry about that out there. You have no control out over that stuff out there. So why even worry about it? Why even talk about it? It's like trying to cover a gentleness, you know? It's like putting a blanket over me. It's like, who cares, Brian? Don't worry about that. But... Yeah. They don't realize there's such a, um, a freedom that comes with this. There's an upliftment because you're acknowledging a part of your star, your history, your star heritage, that you're much bigger than what you've been told on the planet. There's a freedom by just knowing that. And by sharing that with others, people start to question everything, religions, everything. I think It goes so deep. Yes. Yeah. 2027, it is needed, actually. Just like Star Trek First Contact, I think that's what's going to happen. Only when humans have lost everything will you be able to accept change. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like hit rock bottom. Sometimes it takes that. Yeah. yeah, you need it. You really need a bad kick in the ass to get your things moving. Like, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share my story real quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm quite tired and sweaty for my garden, so I'll just be quick. It's like um, I work for... Yeah, Malaysia Airlines. So I always, I've always hated the job. Actually, I appreciate it, but I've always hated it. And I've known years ago that I don't, I won't be doing this forever. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do for money. I just don't want. I just want to leave. But it actually took 
two aircraft going down last year with friends on board, you know. So that was the kick. And now I'm just I'm just gonna leave in a few months. And I'm like, I don't care. So it humans, although we are suffering in a situation, we will not get ourselves out of it unless we are really kicked. You know, that's I think humans are like to quote the Pleiadians. Humans are an exceptionally lazy species. So, so we do need a kick in the ass for change, for big change. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Roxy? It's, yeah, before real quick, I just Hi. wanted to expand on that. Your courage and your passion, like you said, not knowing where you're going to be or where you're going to go, but you're just following, stay true to you. And, and like you said, given sessions and whatever drives you, follow that because that will lead you open up doors, open up doors, that open up doors, and never stop. It's beautiful. Yeah. Much love to you, my friend. Thanks, man. All right, I'll mute myself. Roxy, please say something. Hi, sweetie. How are you? <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> yeah, I popped off and came back on. I had a weird thing so anyways I'm back hi Roxy oh. are you familiar with the topic we're discussing I just caught the ta tail end of it oh the no, question is what to do with very enlightened humans nice souls very enlightened which have a blockage when it relates to extraterrestrial star beings how a light worker who is awakened to the idea of aliens, how could light worker relate to these people? What is the purpose of this relation? And does is there a need to awaken them to idea of extraterrestrial star beings or not? Hang on real quick. <laughs> So, you have an enlightened light worker, and he wants to understand how to relate to extraterrestrials or even acknowledge them. Because what I was listening to Brian, I like what Brian was saying about that. Because you know, just the belief or the focus on it expands an idea for all of humanity vibrationally as well as you know verbally. Um. So, how about those who are have blockage who are not interested in extraterrestrials. There are very nice people who are very uh, very advanced in many other ways, who are helping others, who are bright, open, kind, but who have a blockage when it relates to extraterrestrials. How do we, you, your community, should treat them? How to interact with them or interact with them at all? Well, no, 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 no. Let's not limit this. No, 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 no. The idea is if that entity at that time, at that space-time now, is choosing not to engage or has a blockage about extraterrestrials or aliens, so be it. Because the minute you try to idealize them into your way of thinking, you become a preacher. And we've had enough of that shit. You offer, and in the moment, not predestined, because that only limits it, you offer in the moment when the time is that moment, and you will know because it is the slipstream, your highest joy. Then that's when you offer your take on extraterrestrials and how maybe extend it into the benefits of it, the knowledge of it, as Brian elaborated on it. I think that's beautiful. But to purposely focus on how to shift an entire group of people in a predestined idea, a conditioned idea of an outcome, that in and of itself is limitation because we are all free will experience our journey through the billions of timelines that we've all co-created to get to this now we're doing very exceptional maybe you don't perceive it that way but I do because when I see a human being that born into complete forgetfulness from day one and the only covet their ideas around them then I know that through our love for each other and not preaching for each other to each other rather then I know that this epic species is well on its way. We just chose a time to fortify and put in the foundation that there is something different, that you are beyond yourself. 
and I think by the representation of our, let's say, choosing our joy in the moment, we offer that. But I don't want to go in with an idea of shifting them because my representation of my own shifting is what shifts the collective. Make sense? I appreciate your perspective as well, and thank you for bringing that perspective. I was waiting for it. We had several sharings where people were so eager to share their knowledge to others and wanted to uplift them, to awaken them to the idea of extraterrestrials. That I was even little, uh, how to say, I wanted to bring another perspective, and I hope that perspective would come from other side without me prompting, right? Mm, yes, there is a saying, learn to walk before you run, right? I would give you a, an analogy, a, a picture which would give you some perspective maybe. Imagine parents, two nice parents live in, and they have their first child and they're so excited and they wish to teach the child everything they wish to teach the child. So even if the child is in the belly, they start talking to him and playing music to him. And as soon as the child is born, they start teaching him everything they know. So that child gets the load of their energy and desire to share. And the next child is born, and they already have some experience, so they understand the development goes in steps. So they delay, and then the next child is born, and the next child, and when it comes to the fourth child, they realize first the child have to learn how to speak. First the child might want to learn the musical tunes which gets that child excited, and then maybe more complex music. And then the perception of the child is very simplistic in the early years, and it's very out of sync with the main reality of the surroundings. It's very different, it's like a dream. So you can speak to the child only on this dream language so they understand. When you explain your concept, which is different, they understand it differently just because they're in a different bubble of reality, in a different frame of mind. And as the child grows, you just realize that their spirit, their spiritual vibration, their purpose in life is different from yours and from your wife, so you better give them what they need, ask the question they ask, help them grow in their choice of growth. So you, sh you learn to ask questions, asking where you are now, what excites you, what are your problems and how can be of service. And that is absolutely most efficient for the growth of the child. So when you speak going out to the light workers, to bright people who have a blockage about extraterrestrials, before sharing your knowledge, your awakening, your state of mind, which is kilometers away, miles away from theirs, Get to their vibration, ask them where they are, what excites them, what is their trouble of today, what is their challenge. And as you learn it, your spirit, your mind, your frame of mind becomes related to theirs. And see what would be the next step would be which would be most beneficial for their growth at the moment. And maybe with your connection to spirits, with your enlightenment, with your connection to your higher self, you might bring a new perspective which would be the next step, the next step for them. So give them the next step, not the whole book, here is the Bible, here is Upanishads, here is the Kabbalah. 
uh, here are the nine books of or five books of or whatever not the whole answer just the next step and this next step could be even formulated as a question how about that have you considered that what would you think be if you did that or what would be your next step and just as you interact as you telepathically link as your hearts link they get it they get it and give them time see them growing it's like a plant you don't dump all the nutrients on the plant all the water on the plant all the sun on the plant there is appropriate amount and each now there is an appropriate amount play with it on their terms play with it dance with it you cannot do the dance for themselves you have they do the step you do your dance you do your step you dance you hug you chat yes that would be my message of today I hope it helped please share and reflect I All hope right. I didn't I didn't um, offend you in any way. I didn't want to interfere first. I wanted to have you speak, and I was very happy you pronounced everything which I wanted to hear. You did pronounce it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Armisis. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank, Thank you, Roxy. Thank you, Noha. Thank you, Sarah. I was going to expand on that real quick. Yes, know. beautiful. Thank you for that. The whole thing is really connecting with people and when a group of people is which is say take for instance those who are religious those who come from a very religious background um, those of the new age movement if there's a way you can come down where you can balance where you can find you, you we have so many differences but yet we're just using different words is all we're doing there's a language barrier we all, what we say is, what are angels? But if there's some way where we can reach them, it's, it's not about pushing your agenda. It's about really listening to how others are using their verbiage, how others are using their words. It's connecting, going beyond the veil to reach them in a way that they, on their level, so you might have to come down a level. You might have to, whatever it takes to really say, I hear you. I'm listening, connecting with them at their level. Don't be way, way, way up here. You don't have to. You have to be grounded. You have to come down. You have to can't always be in the clouds. The way to reach humanity is being grounded, is really connecting with them at their level. And that takes that is wisdom. That is wisdom. Because what you're doing and you're offering, you're connecting in a way, such a way, that you're this language barrier. They may say gurus, and then, you know, we may, those in the New Age movement, others will, those of a religious background will say, ah, priests and pastors. Connect with them in a way that reaches them at their level. If you're, if our mission's here to connect with people, of like mind, but those even don't exclude anyone. Include them. Get to the root of it. Connect with them in such a way that they can tolerate you. You can tolerate them. It's not trying to, because if you're trying to get your message across, wouldn't you do it in such a way? Wouldn't you speak in such a way that you can touch their heart? It's touching their heart first. Being knowing who you are first, because how can you truly appreciate and love them and respect their belief systems without you loving yourself first? But bringing it down a notch where you can connect with them at their level, don't scare them away. You know, it's really not trying to scare them away. It's just they're using different languages. They talk about angels and and God and stuff in such a way. But we are what in the New Age movement talk about extended masters and other things but if you can find a commonality if you can reach them it's coming down to their level it takes getting out of the ego but whatever it takes 
reach them in such a way that they can appreciate what you have to offer, what you're sharing with them in that moment. That's all. Thank you, Brian. Yes, thank you, Brian. Well said, Brian. Thank you. Dear soul, I resonate with you fully. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to say hi. I'm Tasha. I've been hi. watching. Hi. Hi. I love all you guys, and I, I'm just, um, just happy that I got to join you guys and figure out how to join you guys. So I'm excited to be here, and um, I am super interested in canine beings. I don't know if any of you guys know about any of them, but um, I had a session with Treb or Yitney, and he yes. told me I was connected with a canine being from the Karina constellation. Oh, and my God. You're so going to need to talk to Corel. <laughs> Okay. Yes, Corel. Also, aka Pegasus. But yeah. <laughs> yes. Sarah, I'll let you explain it. We'll explain after the live feed, but okay. definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That's all. Welcome, Tasha. It's nice Welcome. to have you joined. Nice you got the technology in place. Welcome. Connect to our people. You have. Actually, our mm, people who are very often join us, uh, it's a core group. We kind of finally got together. So you're in a great place in a great mm, environment. Uh, meet everyone. Everyone say hi and uh, join and interact. Enjoy the introductions. Can you introduce more of yourself? Sure. What's your path? What's, uh, how did you find us? Um, I found you through Treb. Well, I found you through, through Rob's uh, YouTube channeling. Um, actually, I found Jim Charles, and then, of course, I found you, Max. And I have been a therapist for, like, 10 years now. Um, I've done some energy work, which I've had some beautiful, amazing experiences. Um, I'm from Las Vegas. I was born and raised here. Las uh, Vegas. I have two kids that are my furry kids. One of them passed away a couple months ago, which has been really, really, really difficult and hard for me. Even though I get to see her in my dreams, it's still like I physically want to touch her. But And then I have my other son, my son Bear Bear, who's a Yorkie, and they're just my life, pretty much. And I'm obsessed with, this is all I do all day long. If I don't have any clients, this is what I do. I just am obsessed with listening to channelings and Stuff like that. So, yeah, Rob's became a good friend of mine. So, where in Vegas do you live? With that? Where in Vegas do you live? What part? Oh, uh, Southern Highlands. Oh, cool. Yeah, I lived up in Centennial Hills for like eleven. Well, a couple different places in there, but about eleven years I was in Vegas. Love it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Roxy, hi, Roxy. Hi, sweetheart. I've I've seen a few of your um, videos too. I love your energy. Thank you, baby. I love how how um, how you curse when you're when you're smiling. I think that's just great. Because <laughs> you get to the point. <laughs> it's the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's really well, thank cool. you, and yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Good. having me. I'm finally. I'm like, try, I've been trying to figure it out for like a week now. I'm like, why isn't it working? <laughs> but I'm here now, so thank you for inviting me and having me here. Great you joined. Welcome. Thank you. Tell me more about your therapy. Okay. Um, I had... Um, I this. I'll tell you an amazing story. I actually started... <clears throat> I actually started, I moved into this house just a few months ago, and I specifically moved into this house that has a balcony so I could connect with UFOs. And the first night that I started recording, the first night I went on my balcony with a swing, I started recording UFOs, well, they're not UFOs, but they're orbs. Um, and I've, I've recorded them like three or four times now. But my sessions, um, 
I had this overwhelming, beaming, loving energy just go throughout my entire body. And then instantly I was, I, I knew I'm a family relative that has passed away and I'm here to love and support him. So at the time, and I didn't meditate for this to happen, like this has never happened to me before. And so I was confused. I didn't know, like, okay, this must be. And then I asked my client, you know, do you have any relatives that have passed away? And he said, yeah, my dad. And I said, well, he's here. <laughs> but I don't think he believed me, um, which is okay. But it was the most beautiful, amazing experience I've ever, I mean, the love. There's no words that can describe the love that I felt. And then when I had my session with Treb, he told me that, um, that it was my higher self. Um, connecting with me, and um, <clears throat> I was like, I want to do that all the time. <sighs> I want to feel that all the time. <laughs> so um, I wish that I could have more clients, but unfortunately, it's not very easy for myself. I've worked at many spas before, and I just don't want to work for anybody. I want to work for myself. So, um, and it's kind of difficult. I don't know if it's because it's Vegas, but it's hard for people to take me seriously as a real true therapist and not, you know, ones that, you know, do certain things at the end. <laughs> so unfortunately it's been very difficult to build up a clientele, but <clears throat> um yeah. I'm just I'm I'm on my journey just learning uh more about meditating and and connecting to myself in that way. And learning all this stuff about all this, all these, all this star family that we have, you know, um, is very exciting. Very exciting. I almost want to be other places than here a lot of the times, you know. But. Hey, Dasha. Yes. It's Roxy again, can I offer something? Yes, please do. I don't see it as unfortunate. I don't see it as Las Vegas as being difficult. I don't see you with what, not a lot of clients. Okay? okay. Let go of those limitations. Be now and just know that that is your joy. You will attract it. It can work no other way. Walk through your realities with the divine nonchalance, I am God. And those ideas of abundance coming to you, the ones that you, if you take yourself seriously as what you are, you will receive that in the mirror. So when you understand you are valuable to yourself, this is your joy, then the joy will come to you in a form of entities looking for your services. No more limitations. Yeah, Trust I, the now. Right. I, right. It is about being in the now and not um, letting past experiences uh, affect Bingo. reality. And I probably pre-manifest that because it's just like... It's been a nonstop thing, you know. Well, that well, don't you know? Don't 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 beat yourself up because that's part of awakening. That's part of realizing you took on a set of belief systems based off of the past and the future and predictions and stuff like that. You were taught that, so now you can see you can let's say engage in the now in a different manner with no preconditioned ideas of what happened in the past. You got this, baby. You got this. It's just when I try to express to people what I do, they... Okay, let me ask you a question. Are you trying to express them, giving them the words that would make them understand? Or are you in the moment following your excitement saying that whatever comes out? Make sense? Because as Max says, it's each individual person has their own unique vibration. Those vibrations have words set up in them that they would understand. Right. So if you're going into it with an idea, here's what I do, then you might be staving off some people because they don't understand. Well, I'm overly, overly, overly um, vocal about the fact that I am a professional licensed therapist. Okay. And that's, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm too overly, yeah. you know. Bingo. Don't justify just, what you are. I just don't want them to get the wrong idea because they a lot won't. Of them, you know, they they do them. But because you're saying they do. Ta da! See how perfect the mirror is? Yeah. It I'm is so perfect. Yeah. I've had a few I've had a few clients, but they don't come back because I think they really thought that it was going to be something else. Uh, That's okay. Know. 
follow your joy you will attract the right ones don't worry about what happened in the past it has nothing to do with the price of fish in China now <laughs> right right oh yeah thanks Roxy you're welcome hey, um, how do you pronounce your name again um it's Tasha my father did Tasha. not know how to spell my name when I was born, so that's why it's... No, no, Tasha. Oh. <laughs> that is wonderful. too funny. <laughs> it's wonderful to meet you. Anytime that you want to come on and just, like I say, share with a group of people, even private one-on-one -on -one or to group, just a small group, just to get things out, that things have been bottled up inside of you, just like you're doing now, it's wonderful because you're, you're finding people of like mind. You're attracted to something, so welcome. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful because I have not found that at all. <laughs> You'll find no, it's, it's like an extended family. You found it now. Family. Yes. Well, and, and, you know, I, I started that with Rob, you know, um, when he was going through his divorce, you know, I got, I got really close to him. Um, but, you know, he's super busy. And um, so other than that, you know, I haven't really – I've connected with you all on spirit on a spiritual level. You know, I've met all of you on a spiritual level, but <clears throat> just not on a uh, visual level. But, um, yeah, I don't have anybody around me that um, is like-minded. So that's difficult sometimes, you know. So That's, that's all changing. Very, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bingo. That's yeah. all changing. Thank you guys. Yeah. For just, me to be here. just one thing. Have you applied for the have you uh applied for the stars yet in Hukula? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, yes. Oh, okay. Anything, any in any way, shape or form that I can be used in a friendly way, of course. Yeah. Oh, okay, you did, so that's fine. All right, cool. Just wanna share that. Yeah. Okay, good. Cool. I yeah. actually remember, I actually remembered uh, calling anyone, so that's pretty cool. I think I kind of lucky to have remembered it. So. Yeah. So I, you go there. Okay, you know what? I have I have a question for you guys. If maybe one of you guys have any experience of this, um, a man committed suicide in this house, and um, the property manager lied to me about it. Um, but is there now? I use sage um, all the time. Um, but I don't know, is there any other clearing that you guys would suggest? He, he hung himself, I, I, I'm, uh, from what I heard. Actually, so, yeah. um, you could get on a private session with Jim. And Grindle uh, is actually quite adept at chasing away negative spirits. And he can actually see them there. So like exorcisms and stuff like that, that's what he does apparently. So you can ask Jim, I guess. Yeah, um, I've always had a lot of spirits, even at my last house. Like, I'd hear them all the time, all the time, and it never bothered me because I know that when you open yourself up to that world, they tend to hang out. You know, a beautiful picture with orbs, and I've filmed, you know, orbs flying around in my room. And so, but um, it's just he committed suicide, and uh, I know that that carries a certain kind of lower vibrational energy, you know, and then my, my, my dog passed away a couple months ago. So um, may I say uh, something to you, Tasha? Yes. Have you considered you're having these experiences because you are to help in some way? Yes, I have thought of that. But I haven't... I have connected with him. I hear noises. Um, I don't know if it's my spirit guides or um, I, it's like, come in the room. Come talk to me. You know, you don't have to make noise out in my living room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come in here and talk to me. I don't I don't know how to approach them, you know? I mean... Well, let them approach you as they've been doing already. Yeah. I mean, when, the next time I hear something, like, in the living room, should I just walk out there and verbally... Sam here. I mean, I've been thinking about this for the few months that I've been living here. You know, oh, well, that's great. I'm here to help this person see the light or possibly, it's, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's also, Natasha, and also you could say, like, maybe if they're really, when they're there, you could say, like, maybe ask yes and no questions just to start the dialogue, like two taps for yes, one for no, you know, like a knock on the wall or something, you know, some kind of energy exchange, you could always try that too. Yeah. Just something where you can build a dialogue, a, a feeling, a sensation, and just and, and speak it out because not just thinking in the mind, 
because you right. don't really feel it's just the words they they hear the vibration they feel the vibration it's yeah right speaking to them as they're they're speaking that like someone's there you know they're right human. make it make from, it humanize if, humanize it yeah as long as I'm coming from my heart then it should be a good experience right yeah yes, yes. question Tasha yes uh, what kind of opportunity that that uh, experience bring to you mm. that, that uh, you will maybe not discover if that never happened in your life? It changed my whole perspective on life. It it took me from believing in something to knowing the truth. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I was raised, my mother raised me all about energy, we're made up of energy, so I grew up in a spiritual, you know, household, for the most part, I mean, there was some dysfunctions there, but who doesn't have that in their, you know, childhoods, but, um, so, I, it was mine, I mean, it was just so beautiful, there's just no words that can describe how amazing it was, and, um, It just took me from from believing something to knowing something, knowing that higher power and that that love that is just beyond words that can describe. See it's, right it's there, true. your smile, your smile starts to come out. You see it. You look yeah. in the mirror. Another thing that I would recommend: um, when you Find some time where you could do this maybe a daily, a daily, you can say not a daily ritual, but just a practice where you could look in yourself in the mirror and start to not judge anything about you, your your body, nothing. Just look in the mirror and stand for a while and look deep in your eyes and say, I love you. You're That's magnificent. Right. Those yeah. things, just that reflection, that, that feels so good, doesn't it? And when you say this day after day, your mind starts to believe it. Your conscience, you're just you pull it all together, and pretty soon you know it. You don't have to ever doubt who you are. I do have some um, abandonment issues, you know, that I need to heal on. So yeah, yeah. Um, that definitely, um, you know, is stuff I need to work on. You know, so when I look in the mirror, um, and I have done the "I love you," you know, uh, I just need to do it more. You know, I need to I really believe it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel, I feel like most people have to like really like meditate and like put their intent to have that experience that I had, and I had some no. Do, some don't. Yeah. I had no clue that was going to happen. Well, you know. If 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 you not just do it when you you reach the the moment of your not doing just. Uh, Just knowing you, you, you love fully your, yourself. What will change in your, in your life, in your perspective of yourself? What change in, in your professional side? What would change in your personal change, side? I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. What, what has changed in, in me since that experience? I will try to repeat. What um, will be different in your life? When you not need to to try to see yourself and love yourself fully, but you're just knowing, in the same way you're knowing, uh, you have something different in energy around you. Did you still follow a little bit? Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say it one more time. Sorry. Not need to be sorry. Uh, Matt and uh, Matt, no Brian. Brian said you just need to look in mirror and try to change your point of view or yourself. The the question I, I I bring is when you don't need anymore to try to change it, just knowing you're fully yourself and accept yourself. What will change in your life? What will be new? in your professional side, personal side? You're asked, well, I would have to experience, I would have to be at that point, I think, to, to say, you know, what that would bring into my life, but um, I still deal, I'm, I'm an empath tremendously, if, and I deal with you, a lot of family you, stuff. Yeah. But, um, if, if you just... Uh-huh. 
if you just just maybe imagine maybe close your eyes and imagine that's already there and imagine what is change act like if it's already there what is change um just just not judging myself not you know loving myself yeah or yeah. expectations of others or what you feel those expectations you know what mom and dad or where our friends and family are going to think that's a lot <laughs> that alone is a lot yeah not to have my father in my life is really hard <sighs> Yes, that's the healing of letting go. If you can get to the point where you can eventually say, "I'm okay with that," and that might take some time, but when it, when you're ready to say, "I can let go and know that He's always there around me," and the greatest place where you feel Him the most is always in your heart. That's that'll never change. It just it just doesn't make sense to me why. A father wouldn't want to have his child in his life, you know. Mm -hmm. It's Sorry. probably also a people <laughs> that maybe he at the time. I'm gonna be direct. Um, you can be direct. Didn't fully, <laughs> didn't fully appreciate and love himself. Yeah, I, I, I definitely know that. Um, I definitely agree. I definitely believe that. You know. Uh, in some ways, I know that it's not personal. I know that, you know, he's going through whatever he's going through from his childhood. I know it's a generational thing, you know. Um, he hasn't been in any of his three children's lives for like ten years. And <clears throat> But you're not okay with that. You're still holding on to something, the attachment. And that's hard to let go. I know it's hard. <laughs> if, if, if he, what is he, how is if it was easy to let go, how it could be for you to be easy to let go? It's, it's almost seeing that, okay, he made a choice. He made a decision that was his choice. No matter what the circumstances were, he still chose that. I just that don't, I don't understand it, though. It doesn't make sense. To why the mind, mind-boggling, right? Yeah. Like, but why, you say? Why this? Why that? Why would it have to be this way? Yeah. But there, from a greater point of view, it maybe it wasn't just to, but to heal his self. It was to heal others around him. And I, I told him, you know, the, the three times that I've spoken to him in the last ten years, um, that I love him, and that you know, no matter what's happened in the past, you know, um, I don't judge him for what happened in the past, but. It like goes in one ear and out the other. And I just gave up on trying. <sighs> so. It's really the biggest. The challenge will be eventually. It, it's the acceptance, letting go. Yeah. That's true. And knowing and knowing that I, you know, probably asked him to be an asshole father <laughs> before I came in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to learn something. You know, for oh. for, for to learn that lesson to accept. You know, that this is his journey and not take it so personal, you know? Yes. Finding just, the things that bring you joy now and turning things around in your life, it's not always easy. But the more you love yourself and appreciate knowing that, say, okay, he made that decision. I might not like it, but that was his decision. That's hard. But when I can love myself and say, ah, I am, sorry. I am powerful. I am magnificent. It's okay. It's okay to be angry. The more I hold on to the anger, it eats away at the essence of who you are. It, it, it holds you in a bit of fear that you can't move out. You can't expand. Uh, yeah. I, yes. Right. And my mother, you know, and my mother being in my life, that's been very challenging too. Um, yes. You know, so it's just, and like Treb said, you know, you you can't just believe that it's a good idea that you are love and you are this and, you know, you can be, you know, that you are as powerful. You have to feel that within you, you know, and until you do, you will be lost in where you should be at, you know. Um, so, it always I'm just comes so sensitive. 
And it is sensitive. I, I know you're an empath. You feel it. You feel the emotion. You feel the anger, the rage, the hatred. But inside, it starts with you. Looking in yeah. yourself in the mirror and say, yes, dad may maybe, you know, messed up, but that was his decision. I can learn to let go. If it takes a slow process, it's fine, but eventually it's you with you, you being with you. Right. That's yeah. all it is about. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> and the people of like mine that pull you in, that can help uplift you and just feed off of that. But it, it's really about you being true to yourself and playing with it, making it playful and finding that, that, that childlike energy within yourself to being okay with it, to bring it back how it was. Maybe you had a rough, you're right, a rough a life. But if you can bring a part of that playfulness, of that childhood back, into yeah. your now. That it's will just help about loving with. myself. Yeah. It's about loving myself, Brian. It really is. It's about accepting and, and loving it, myself. Not taking their beliefs or taking what I experienced from what they have said. And because it it's own. not your responsibility to carry other people's drama. Right. It's not your responsibility. That's their issues. Right. That's really a part of them. That's their choices. Yeah. You I just feel like I can be in command with you. Right. I just feel like if we connect, that we, you know, we could be good and love and be, you know, help be there for you. Well, like, try. It can only be a good thing, you know. Like, yes. why? But now you can look at it and say, at least you can walk away and say, ah, I tried, I right. tried. I did. And be thankful for that. At least you tried. You reached out. You tried something. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be shame and guilt of that. At least you tried. Which makes it sadness even harder. is that he's not reaching out with you. <laughs> yeah. Makes it even harder to accept that he just. Yeah, this, that, it's the letting go of the attachments that hold us back is one of the hardest things for humans on the planet. Letting go of attachments is the hardest thing on the planet. It really yeah. is. Just because he brought me into this world doesn't mean that he has to be a part of my life, right? That's true. It always comes down to what you feel inside. Yeah. It's in that moment. You wish, you know, you're right. You wish that they were part of your life, that they were always there for you. You know, you somebody that can understand where you're coming from, your point of view is your fears, your doubts. But yet, it comes back to you. Now, the things that, that not in your life so much anymore, but now you've replaced them with what? With another family here? Or with others, it can't take away from what you lost, but you at least have other people. You're reaching out. You're finding people of like mind to at least give you that cushion of, I can start to stand, and be who I am. It's a support. Yeah. It's a friendship, and it's beautiful. So just to share your 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 pain, your emotions, we can see it in your face. You can feel it too, the frustration. But yet, you're 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 here. You're alive. That's the most important thing to remember. I am that I am. You are alive. You exist, period. Right. There's nothing greater than that. You are alive now. Yeah. Now it's you taking command and owning it. I just want to go fly around on some other planet. <laughs> <laughs> I want my own spaceship. <laughs> I play. I, t I tease with these guys. I love, I love having my own ship and doing what I want, but that I asked, is. I asked Bashar. Um, of course, <laughs> we asked him for two eight, two nights in a row. I said, Bashar, please just take me on your spaceship. Come on. <laughs> he did. I don't know if it was him. I don't. I don't think it was him because Bashar, <laughs> Bashar's like five feet, I think, and these beings were like really tall, and I don't remember anything other than the very end where I was in the like cockpit that was huge and I was sitting at, the, at a seat that was on the whole window you know and I was looking out in space and then there's just huge, a huge explosion and then this mothership appeared and I looked down at my arms and I was like I have goosebumps and then I woke up you were there. You <laughs> so were there. it was, might, not, might not have been Bashar but it was someone that I'm connected to but it was really cool that's really neat and these are experiences will start to come more and more in your life because you're allowing it you're right. allowing it you're in a state of allowance. 
the more you allow, the more you're open, the more you're vulnerable. Like you, right now, this has got to be maybe hard sometimes for people to do, to come out like this and share this. But you know what's happening behind the scenes? It's healing for you. Oh, yeah. It's tremendous relief to let all that that's been built up with, with inside you. You're finally letting it out more and more. I don't feel like anybody really understands me, other than no judgment other here. Than like other than like-minded people like you guys, you know. Right, no judgment here. Yeah. Because even in spite of fear, you're still your 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 courage. Look how much courage. Look where you are now. You're just your smile. Look at that. <laughs> you're I know, I'm talking out. to a bunch of people I don't know. <laughs> yeah, total strangers to you. But yet it's so cool because. This is what where the upliftment comes from. You expressing your vulnerability, your coming out, and you taking your. Because connection. I know, I know, I know who I'm connecting with. That's what it is. I would never mm -hmm. do this with another group of people that were not like-minded. You know. There you go. That's, That's cool. what I'm it's I beautiful. Mean, yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you, Tasha. Nice beautiful. to meet you, friend. Sorry, Max, that I kind of like. No like worries, no worries. Oh. <coughs> ah, Tasha, yes. Ah, thank you, Tasha, and thank you, Brian. That was a treat for my heart. That was well said, and thank you. Well played out. Yes, everything is said, actually. <laughs> I just wanted to, to elaborate on the idea of spiral. You really get the challenge, really get the trouble which you cannot handle. It's always just that right amount which you get of darkness which you almost cannot handle, but you actually can handle it. And it's always a spiral. You go down, and then you get up, and you fly, and then you go down again. But you don't go, don't. You don't come back on the same level. You come on a new level. And on a new level, it's always higher and higher. If you do things right, it's higher and higher. Unless you do things wrong, it's down, down, and down. But now it's higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say, get this comeback, make this comeback easier. As you learn, it, don't ha it doesn't have to be hard comeback. It can be a quicker, faster, lighter, better comeback. As you choose, it's your choice, as you choose to be in light, stay in light, stay in positivity, disconnect from the darkness, then the comeback is becoming easier, especially if you have friends, you found new friends, reach to them. How do I and disconnect it, from my mother, though? Yes, say again. How how can I disconnect from my my mother that that brings me down so much? Love yourself more. Forgive. The key word would be forgive. Accept and forgive. Acceptance is one of the steps to di to disconnect. You see, to be in conflict, two people have to be involved, you and the other one. Yeah. If you're not in conflict, they can harm you. They can harm you physically, but not emotionally anymore, because you are not there. It takes yeah. two to have one harm another. It takes two emotionally. If you're not there, if you're in a state of no matter what happiness, whatever, I love you anyway. I forgive you anyway. No matter what you do, I forgive you anyway. Oh, Even I, so bad I, thing, I would I tell resist, her. <laughs> but I would not be worried about it. Yes, bad things happen, but I am accepting everything. I'm in my vortex bubble. It's Sometimes. anything negative passes through, but I'm not accepting it. It comes Sometimes. to me, it goes through, I'm still here. Brian? Yes, let me inter interject here. Yes. Sometimes our parents, they test us, not consciously, 
but it's unconsciously, it's subconsciously, it's like they, it's like they're trying to make us stronger in a way. They test us, they throw, they know how just right to how to push our buttons. Well, you know sure what I mean? That is. We go my, off. My, mom, my mother's dealing with her childhood, which was horrible. Oh. Horrible. So that's right. this time so around. You know, this time around, instead of being hurt and sad and, and, and upset that she hurt me again, yes. I had nothing but compassion for her this time around, and I just wept and just cried and and understood and just I reacted differently than I normally do. You know, and so that's also yes, so it's all about how you react. <laughs> yes, how you react to mom and and if her verbiage and how she might go off on you or you now that the greater wisdom came in where you start to see ah it's why mom's reacting why she's saying the things that she's saying that's hurtful because of her childhood what's been projected on from her grandparents and onward. It, it's something that goes back generations, but yeah. don't take it so personally. That's the hardest part is not taking it personally. It's moving right. beyond that and saying, ah, I love mom unconditionally. I love yeah. dad unconditionally. They're, they they had their ways or separate ways. They didn't see eye to eye all the time, but there was something different about them. Why I'm here, I exist, I'm here now, I'm present, is learning to stay in the moment, is being present with who you are, and loving them unconditionally. But there's a reason why sometimes they just see it as a playful, sometimes of, as a game. Ah, mom, you know, she's joking around. Maybe she's not, but yet, try not to take it so personally. That's their issues, not yours. Well, that's why this time around it was different, you know? Yes. I was actually reacted differently, you know? It was just a total different reaction. What happened? Hello? Oh, you're fine. It, it just oh. it's other people, people bit mu oh. muted. Um, okay. that, that, that it is true. It's how you react. It's learning to be more wiser so the next time you catch yourself. You catch yourself at these times, at these critical moments, like I could say something really nasty and mean, or should I understand it from their point of view? Why are the, the – they're saying these things for a reason to me. I'm hearing this. But I don't have to necessarily agree with it, or I can participate, or I choose not to. Oh, I can I, send love. I, I can. Yeah, right. it's just how you I've, react. I've got, I've got. I've exactly. I'm only in control of the way I react, and I've tried reacting in a loving manner. And she's just like, oh, I mean, she just comes at me even more nastier sometimes. And it's like, um, and this time it was just nothing but compassion, and and just I just cried. I just bawled my eyes out. And she saw, and I told her, expressed this to her too, you know, Mom, for the first time I reacted differently instead of being hurt and sad about the way you treated me. I had nothing but compassion for you. And I went over what she's been through in her childhood, and she just started crying. And she's like, it's not an excuse for being the way that I am. And it was a beautiful, you know. Um, you broke through to her. That's beautiful. There's healing right there from your mother. Yeah, I'm like Roxy said, you know, we're helping you know, helping my mother is by loving myself. That's the best way I can help both, both parents. You know? Roxy's right on. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now we can continue the discussion to Max. Oh, did Max disappear? I don't know how this happens or works, but everyone's muted. He may yeah. take a break. Oh, okay. Yep. So are, we all, are we all just chatting now here? Or? Yeah. He's it's still alive. We've yeah. been chatting, most certainly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gave me the um, controls to this thing, so I think I could take it off live if everyone wishes. Yeah, I'm good. That's fine. Everyone wish to take it off live? Yeah, yeah. So, if I want to connect with all of you, do I just find you on Google Hangouts or Google Plus? Google Plus. Yeah, you'll see yes. these little chat boxes and ask some of them, like your email or something. I think uh, Sarah is a good one um, to connect with, and uh, yeah, they'll just send you a link or something, and you just you'll be a part. These little chat boxes will pop up, and that's how we chat and talk. And we have webinars on here, you know, or Hangouts, what we call them. You know, usually once a day or so. Oh, that's you cool. do? Yes. Yeah, you can add us from, from Google Plus or whatever. Okay. And also add on, on the Skype uh, 
Hooklo Questions Forum, and we post a lot of the stuff there as well that we're doing. Okay, what is it again, Roxy? Hooklo. Hooklo Questions Forming. I think is that is that right, guys? Yes, that's right. But yeah. you have to be invited to the group. So if you'd like to add your Skype name on the side, and then we'll invite you. We'll invite you in. Okay. Oh, I'll I'll do that now. <laughs> Can I be invited too? <laughs> oh yes, Sean. Just put your Skype name on the side there. Hi, Sean. What's up, y'all? What's up? <laughs> I love how one of you ladies, I'm not sure which one of you ladies speak Arcturian, but I think it is so beautiful and so amazing. Oh, that's like half of the group now. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> it's so I cool. Think Sabrina, yeah, talking to Sabrina, she has a really good. That's yeah, so there's a number of us actually who speak it. So. And you know, a lot of us, a lot of us got provoked in a way. It was really cool where they would start to, you know, start to say things, and it resonated with us. And then I started starting to speak. And Sabrina helped me with Octarian, uh -huh. and we just, I played around with it. I always, past couple of years, I started like mumbling to myself, and at, all of a sudden, it clicked. Ah, it's a language or something of some sort. It just sounds so yeah. playful and so mm -hmm. just. That, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds so playful. Oh, wait, 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 Tasha. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. You were just doing yes, it. Yes, you're being playful. Go ahead. Just let it come out. Do it. <laughs> Look at that smile. Maybe the second time around. <laughs> All Yay, right. Do it. Let's do it one more time. That is so cute. I love it. I have goosebumps. I think that is so adorable. Would you like to just play with it and respond? I'm too shy right now. Oh, <laughs> oh that's okay. <laughs> next time, next time. That's okay. Yeah, that we'll have plenty of time to do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy that I finally connected with you guys. Yeah. Is that, is that a train? Is that, that was Arcturian? Yes. Uh, that's so cute. And it's very uplifting yeah. and playful. That's what you feel from it, you know? Uh, it, it you. And th what's really nice, when I when I jump on here with these guys, it's so wonderful because it uplifts the rest of my day. Yes. It's just oh, because yeah. and it starts to get into the, and it starts to get co more common and more common, and it's like, wow, you know? I'm start I can feel this all the time. Yeah. Even though it's like a permission slip, but it feels so good just to right. just to have that and play with that. Yeah. And it builds self confidence. That was the thing that I used to lack. I mean, at the time, because I felt like I couldn't. Talk. I was very an introvert in high school. I didn't. I didn't really socialize that much. But yeah. when I met these guys, it was like day and night. It just wow, you know. Yeah. It feels so good. I'm a huge communicator. Like I love, you know, I, I'm a huge communicator. I mean, I was <laughs> raised that way, and I'm a five planets in Aries, so I'm a huge communicator. But um, but I'm quite shy, you know, with people that you know that I've never met. Um, that's but, gonna change. Yeah. That'll change. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. I can. I already know. I like. I already knew you guys before today. You know. Like, yes. I, like I said, I've already connected with your guys' energy before today, so. Yeah. I just can't wait. Do you guys know anything about K-19s? Yes. Talk to Sarah. Talk to Sarah. Tell me now. Okay, I'm going to take this off live because, if I can, because, the, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So bye-bye, everybody. Love you all. We me take it off live now. <laughs> Are you just going to connect with me there? Yeah, we, you can stay here. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. It's you just li live on YouTube anymore. Okay, cool. I think he said he gave me power for that, but it's not working. Oh, well, it's still going to be live unless everyone wants to jump in another hangout. What do we think? Um, I think Gata, do you have control? I think Max gave Gata control. Yeah, go there. I don't know. Agoda. If you're there, do you want to take do you take it off live? I don't know if he can. 
And there's a comment on the side. It says, he said, keep live. I'm not sure. Okay. He said, keep live? Okay. Okay. That's well, you know, we, we've collect, connected to the, uh, the canine beings. And the oh, one wow. And we've spoken to uh, Krell. That's his name now. Um, his name is Metrolamus. Uh -huh. Metro Lamas was the representative for the canine world that oh. spoke to us. Oh, we finally got Metro Lamas. Awesome. Yeah, Metro Lamas. Yes, he spoke through Jim, remember? Is he from, uh, so, is he from, who came through this last weekend? Oh, this last weekend? Uh, Ish. Ish was wonderful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's he's a guy Sabrina read from a book. And she, his his real name is something like Ish Ish Stock, but apparently everyone keeps getting it wrong. So he said, just call him Ish. <laughs> and cool. did, yes. did he express that he's from the uh, Karina constellation at all? Or I believe that actually Ryan was asking about the Karina constellation, right, Brian? Ryan was asking about that. Yeah, it's another another guy on here. Uh, I believe Ryan was asking about that, yeah. Yes. Hmm. So there's two of them actually here that are very connected to the canine. Yes. Uh, and, they, and they are talking about doing um, oh, some type of a site-to-site -site transfer. Um, well, once everything is once hammered everything. out with our governments. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, so, don't you all just wish it could just be now? Come on. <laughs> yes. <What>? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we're doing things apparently the earthly legal way. So. Protocol. <laughs> the protocol. Yeah, I'm still trying to understand that, like how, <laughs> like um, how they are allowed to do certain things, like what Jim Charles talks about the channelings. You know, they're allowed to talk to us, but they're, like, all that seems very confusing to me, you know? Yes. Like, the government's really allowing um, the connection. I mean, do they know about the um, colonies, obviously? Yeah, right? Of course they know about them. They had the guns pointed on them 24-7 before the last meeting. Um, mm -hmm. But this meeting is about site-to-site -site transportation, physically, because we're already doing it astrally. Right. So, the dream time, yeah. Yes. That's really, really, really cool. I can't wait to experience that. Mm hmm And that's I actually know. happening tomorrow, I believe, right, guys? That's tomorrow? I think the 30th, yeah. Yeah. What's happening tomorrow? It's the meeting with our governments and the aliens. <laughs> And there's a lot now. The Lyrians, um, are they are they the uh, feline? Yeah, they're the feline, the Lyrians. Are they kind of like uh, the um, Yael? In, in what way? Well, isn't the Yael? I know Ishua, um, Sean Swanson, who channels uh, Ishua. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, are they? His feline, that's a feline race. Are they a lot like the Lyrians or Lyrians? I thought the Yael was was more gray and human. Yeah, I don't believe they're feline. But see, that's where I get confused. Unless unless Sean Swanson is channeling two different beings, because yeah, he I believe he is channeling because he also channeled the avian beings as well. So the what? he channels the avians. Oh, okay. I don't know. If you go on his um, YouTube channel, it says uh, the feline race, and he explains what they look like. Mm-hmm. It might have been a Lyran or a lion. I believe mm -hmm. recently, they, was he the one who did a lion species? I know he does I the young. That's all I know. Mm hmm Yes, he does the yang yang. Yeah. For the most part. And I love his channelings too. He's got. It's a very playful. Very playful. I just want to go to their planet and just like have fun with them like all day long. You know. Yes. I'm not doing <laughs> Three, third reality, a third dimensional reality. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny because we've had discussions about this. <laughs> and uh, Takura came in one time and she said they smell like wet dog. <laughs> they smell like wet dogs? <laughs> wet dog. <laughs> oh, the canine beans, right? Yeah. Yeah, they sniff you. 
they sniff you everywhere. Yep. And they're going to keep sniffing you everywhere. <laughs> Well, do they do they look like the old Egyptian? Um, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, like Anubis, kind of like that, sort of. Okay. Yeah, and I'm having this little boy over here on my bed. I don't know if you can see him. Come see hi. I don't know if it's too dance to see him, but he's my little son, and he is obsessed with me. I mean. We have such a strong connection, such a strong connection, and I wonder if that has anything to do with being connected to a canine being. Yes. <laughs> yes, if you get a chance, definitely try to book a session with Jim. Roxy is sound. Or even Roxy. Roxy's really great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Roxy, yeah, yes. <clears throat> definitely recommend it. Cool. Yeah, I would love to, Roxy. Here's my. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see if I got my website. I can give you how to connect with me. Okay. Let me get a piece of paper. Here, I'm just gonna. You want me to put it in the chat box and then you click on it and put it in your favorites. Oh, okay. <coughs> That'll hmm. work. Paste. Oh no, hang on. Here we go. <laughs> Come say hi. You guys have to see how adorable he is. Say hi. Say hi. Hi, baby. Oh. He's my baby. Oh, how cute. He's like. <laughs> He's my little bear. You know what's so funny is when, <clears throat> um, like Sean Monson on the uh, Feline Race um, YouTube channel, he has uh, the heart code, and mm. <clears throat> it's just like tones that he's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I play, when I play it, Bear Bear starts. Oh, he starts like howling. So. So he's connecting with them, you know. Yes. Oh, and Daniel, Daniel Scranton, you know, in the beginning of his exactly his, the Hathor Tony. Yeah, he just Gerber just starts going crazy. Oh yes. <laughs> if you ever want to do like one on one or in a group uh, with Tony and stuff, Sarah's excellent, Tony. Yeah. Say that again, Brian. I said if you want to do like one on one. Like with Tony, Sarah would be great to do that with. Sarah. Yes, I'm Sarah here. Yeah, um, but what do you mean if I wanted to do that with Tony? Like uh, Tony, like practice with uh, oh, Tony. sound. Tony. Tony. With sounds and Tony. Yeah, the sounds, oh, yes, the Tony. Yeah, I would love Sarah's to. Sarah's really that. good at that. Yes. Yeah. I, I can tell. Oh, you've heard I, my stuff before. Yes, I've watched your <laughs> videos. I. I love it. My my mother and my grandmother are beautiful singers. They 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 sing so beautifully. Um, mm -hmm. Neither one of them uh, did anything with that talent, but I have a few videos of them on my YouTube channel of them singing karaoke, and they just sound so beautiful. And <clears throat> so it's very much a part of my my family to um, use the voice. Yes, Roxy does it as well. Mm. You sing, Roxy? No, I don't sing, but I tone because I know the Hathor civilization very well. One of my Council of Eleven, if you would call it, is uh, Nakuru from the Hathor civilization. Very cool. Very cool. It's mm -hmm. so amazing to learn of all these different beings. Sure. So it's so, so amazing. Like, it's just, I'm obsessed with it. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my website there on the chat box. So if you click on that and then just save it in your favorites and you'll know how to contact me there, okay? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is toning? Toning, um, hmm. Sarah, you want to answer that? Uh, toning is connecting to frequency of 
the being, spirits, health, nature, life. Everything has a tone, right? Everything has a tone. Everything is filled with light, and light is a tone or frequency as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can connect to those frequencies with the toning, whether it's health, whether it is, um, well, so far I do it with uh, healing. I also tone for the earth. I tone for the water. I tone for, well, you could do it for basically anything. Mm -hmm. It's a vibration. It's about frequency, right? Exactly. <laughs> Right. Well, th well, think of this. Everything is vibration. Everything. Mm -hmm. Light is actually a vibration. Right. Out of light, it's vibrating. Anything that vibrates has tone. Right. Yes. I guess, right? No guessing. Booyah. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's cool how um, and Charles, how they can give you like your frequency number, whatever frequency number you're at. I'm not sure. Is it to cure that it tells that you? And that fluctuates. That yeah, that fluctuates, up. yeah. It's never like a constant, you know. It's right. always the fluctuation. So Because right. you're changing constantly anyway. Right. Cool. Yeah. My little bird is starting to whine. I think he wants to go to the park. <laughs> park time. Park yes. time. Oh, he's sitting with nature. Yes. Oh, like what I, I love to tell you. Do you walk with your feet barefoot? Do you walk on the ground barefoot? Always. <laughs> okay. It's, it's horrible. It's good for grounding, but it's horrible because my feet get so jacked up from it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. However, what I what I wanted to inform you, um, when you do that, you're actually connecting to Earth, and Earth is our mother healer. So most people don't don't know or are not aware that they can ask for healing. Yes, like I said, I've been pretty obsessed with um, this awakening um, information for a long time. So I'm familiar with a lot of things, but there's a lot of things I'm not familiar with. But yes, I'm very familiar with connecting with nature and um, and Mother Earth and and grounding myself. Mm -hmm. Do you ask for healing? It's hard for me to ask for anything from anybody. <laughs> right, which is why I mentioned it. Yeah. You know the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. It's, a, it's, it's that whole thing of not seeing um, good enough, worthy, I, I, I have to deal with that, you know. You I are to... worthy. I would say just go around asking for everything that comes up in your heart. Just ask. Whether, even if no one else is around you, ask yourself for it. Really? And speak it out loud. I love listening to mantra music. It just... Listen to your own voice. That's the key. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You ask for it and you shall receive it because your body is a frequency and you're connecting to an idea of thought, which is also a frequency. And what you think about, it's what creates your reality. What you're feeling and thinking at the same time creates your reality. And so begin to ask for what you wish loudly. Well, maybe not loudly, but just at least speak it out, yeah. even if it's a whisper. <laughs> when I when when I do the park at night and there's like nobody there, I'm like, come on, someone just appear, come on, come meet me. Because like I said, I I every night, you guys, on my balcony, I film these beautiful orbs that mm -hmm. are so beautiful and they're shiny and they're bright and they're they change shapes, like there's like diamond shape this. Like if you go to my YouTube page under my videos, um, you'll see the three times that I, I filmed them. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they, I mean, I don't know. What's your YouTube are. page? Um, it's the same, it's Miss Enlightened One. What is it? Uh, Miss Enlightened One, M-S. Okay. Yeah, E-N-L-I-G-H-T-E-N-E-D. 
and then and then the number one. But yeah, Roxy, if you can connect with that, I mean, I don't know, I don't know who they are. Like I I tried to like say, oh, I love you and you're beautiful and show me your colors and you know I wish you could communicate with me, you know. But I have to. I'm I'm still not. You're strong. wanting more right away. Yes. You're kind of patient. You're wanting it but, all right now. <laughs> and here's another one. You're asking for things outside of yourself. Take it slow. Yeah, I know. Don't get it. Don't get it. What, when I was telling you about the idea of asking, ask for yourself. Love yourself enough to ask for yourself. It's about... It's about... It's about really feeling inside myself that I that I'm worthy and I deserve it. Yeah, and you are. And you come back to that I am, I exist, or I wouldn't be here. You yeah. wouldn't be on the planet if it wasn't meant to be. It's just difficult when people it there are justifications so telling me that I am not. You know. Right, you're not worthy and you're not good That's enough. That's the program as we're raised. Yeah. But just know that you are. You wouldn't be here. So you're looking for validation from everybody else, but you're forgetting that the most important thing is within yourself. Yes, yes. that's what I've been like keying in on lately, the last couple of weeks. Is the most important relationship, and the most important thing is is viewing myself as another being that is my best friend. You know, um, instead of seeking, you know, um, a closeness with somebody else. You know. The most important that I need the to more see. you love yourself, you're gonna see so many more people come and attracted to toward you. That energy that you resonate with. The more you're not kind to yourself, you're pushing yourself away from you being you. It pushes people away. Right. You yeah, start to have this right. Yeah. So the more you are in love with yourself, I know it sounds self-centered, but it's not. Because no, you're accepting that power, but that's what some you'll other hear from other people. Ah, uh, you know, you should love someone. They always, it's always love something else instead of oh, yourself. Yeah. Oh connection. yeah, I've been telling people that for a while now too. Right. Yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta start from the heart. It's gotta be within you, and then you start to feel that magnetic attraction. It just comes toward, toward you. It's beautiful. Yeah, you're that powerful. People, it's, it, it's a challenge because people to be that big, that grand. To have that boldness to speak out, that can be challenging. Yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm usually the one that's talking to people about how beautiful and magnificent they are because, <laughs> I, because I know, you know, I know right. how magnificent and beautiful every single person is, you know. Um, but you so forgot just, about one thing. It's nice to get it. It's nice to hear it back. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then tell yourself in the mirror, look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. <laughs> and you can give it a, a zest, a, a thing. I love you. <laughs> you play with it. You're playful. Yeah. You have a playful energy, beautiful smile. Yes. Like you talk to your dog. <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> and I love him all the time, too. I, I, I'm constantly like, he's my little love baby, and he's whining at me right now in the corner. Uh -huh. <laughs> he acts like he's two years old, and he's ten years old, but... <laughs> yeah, but I, I love loving him because I know that when I'm loving him, I'm loving myself, you know? Yeah, and that love you're giving to him, because I just felt that energy, yes. bring it to you as well. Just, just give yourself that. Yeah, I deserve that, I know. You definitely deserve that. Give it to yourself. Okay, Barbara. Thank you so much, all of you. Yeah. You're welcome, baby. You go enjoy your time at the park with your puppy puppy. Yeah. Okay. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, you guys, and um, I will see you all very soon. Yes. Bye. Welcome. Much love. Bye. Much love. Much love. I'll see you guys. Much love. All right, guys, I got to get off here, too. <laughs> Love you guys. Love, Love you, Roxy. You. Love you, sweetie. Take care. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, guys. Mm. 
Okay. I'm going to jump off as well. Lunchtime. Bye, everybody. Time is mem. Hey, Siobhan. Bye, Sarah. Good you, job. Bye. you take care, darling. Love you guys. Love you. Mwah. Bye. Ciao. Bye.